Today I'm going to show you how to make an amazing double exposure image in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a cool episode for you today. We're gonna to be creating a double exposure, basically combining two separate images, bringing them together using some unique blending modes and creating a piece of art with the images. Before we get into today's episode, I'm announcing Fan Appreciation Week, which is our chance to say thank you to our awesome fans, which is you watching this video. It's gonna be July 28th through August 1st. Basically what we're doing is we're opening a submission form on our website and you can actually click on your screen right now to go to that form. You can submit images, testimonials, pictures, things you've learned from Flurn, pictures with you and Flurn and swag and things like that. Just showing your appreciation, your involvement or some questions you have for Flurn. And then July 28th through August 1st, we're gonna be making episodes that are exclusive to the ideas you guys suggest on this form. And we're giving shout outs to our number one fans and the people who actually submit things on this form. So it's our way of saying thank you and to call attention to you guys who actually make Flurn possible. Submit your entries between July 14th and the 22nd for your chance to get a huge shout out as well as episodes dedicated in your honor. So today's episode suggestion was brought to you by Alan Avasar, and he said, I want to learn how to do a double exposure. Now, traditional double, ex double exposure with film, basically you take an image, you don't wind the film, you go somewhere else and you take another photo and they combine together. Now, with Photoshop, you have the option to do that with a lot more control and some really, really cool tools. So the images we're using today are from Photolia.com, which is an awesome stock website. And we're gonna be combining both of these together to create a really cool piece of art. You're gonna be amazed at what we can do with a, just a regular portrait and a picture of some flowers. And I'm gonna go through all kinds of cool tips and tricks along the way so you guys can actually make great double exposures. First thing we need to do is get these images together. So I'm gonna grab my move tool and I'm gonna hit shift and click and drag from one image to the other. And that basically just puts both of the images onto the same document. Now we're gonna hit F for full screen and I need to kind of figure out how I want these to blend together. That's the real trick is figuring out placement and sizing and things like that. So what I would recommend doing, we're gonna click on our background layer. I'm just gonna make our, our whole document quite a bit bigger so I can kind of move these things around and scale them and I won't feel restrained on like where actually everything is placed. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the C for the crop tool and I'm just gonna kind of drag out here and give ourselves a little bit more space. There we go. That looks pretty good. And just make sure you don't click this delete crop pixels button. Just keep that unchecked and you'll be good to go. All right, so we've got more space now and see, ah, it's nice, I can breathe, it's wonderful. I can move my things around and I just have a lot more space to work with. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and make our subject we're gonna lower the opacity a little bit and I need to kind of figure out these things are gonna wind up blending together. So before you get into all the blending, all that stuff, it's really important to kind of figure out where you actually want them to be and how they're gonna be placed. Now, I've already done this, so I kind of know what I want. Um, I'm gonna hit Command T on this uh, flower layer and I'm gonna just bring it up in this direction. There we go. And I'm gonna have that kind of like coming from the bottom. So the idea was we can have our subject and she's going to be kind of like peeking through these flowers. All right, let's click her. I'm going to hit command T on that. And we're just going to scale her down a little bit. All right, let's zoom out and I'll do that again. Command T and we're going to scale her down just a little bit. All right, there we go. Something like that I think is looking really, really good. So this is just kind of getting everything in a, approximately where I think it's going to go. You can always change these things. But this way I can see like we're gonna have some details from the flowers in her arms here and things like that. And then there's gonna be a flower right over this eye. There's still a lot more we're going to do, but that's about the interaction that we want to do for this image. Okay, now underneath those two things, let's go ahead and grab a solid color layer and I'm just gonna go all the way to white. There we go, let's make sure to put that on the bottom. So we're working with a white background. Okay, so this is a complex episode. We've got a white background, we've got our subject and we've got uh, uh, some flowers as well. So how do we get these all combined? Well, the trick is gonna be with your different blending modes. And here are a couple suggestions. I would suggest using images that are either a dark subject on a light background or a light subject on a dark background. 
In both of these cases, we're going to actually wind up cutting the subjects out, so they're both going to have white backgrounds. So I would suggest, you know, don't just go outside and pick, take a picture of like your backyard when you have like a, a pool and grass and trees and stuff like that. That might not be the best image to use for a double exposure like this. Maybe something that's a little bit more simple, like a tree against the sky. So like tree's going to be dark, sky's going to be light. A little bit more separation like that's really going to help out when you're doing these double exposures. But get in there and play around because you're, you can get some awesome effects using these blending modes. Okay, so we are using blending modes. So what we're going to try here, let's just bring our opacity back up to 100 with this subject. And really the blending modes, I've played around a lot with this. The blending mode that I always go to is Lighten. That actually winds up working really well. Okay, so Lighten works pretty well. I can see what's going on. I can see our subject's eye and stuff like that in there. Things are starting to look good. However, it's, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of difference between our subject and the background. Well, you can totally play around here. It's not you don't need to like, keep these layers just as, as they are. If I make this flower darker, then I'm going to be able to see my subject a little bit more. So I'm going to hit Command L, and we're just, that brings up our Levels Adjustment layer. And then I'm going to just bring my middle slider right over here, and we're just going to make that a little bit darker. There we go. Let's hit OK there. So making the flowers darker, you can see the before and the after, is going to mean that our subject is going to stand out even more. Now, what if I hit Command L on my subject, which is bring the levels, and I make that a little bit lighter? Well, I can do that too. So you can, there's a lot of area to kind of like play around and get different effects with this. Okay, now I like what's going on with my subject for the most part. Her Part of her face is missing, and there's all, all, sort, all sorts of other things that I want to do. We're going to change this bright back to normal for a second, and I'm going to cut her out of the background, and that's going to help just keep things a little bit more focused on just her so I don't have to worry about the background. So for that, we're going to grab the magic wand tool. <laughs> this is a complex episode. We're going to bring our tolerance down to like 9 or 10, there we go. Let's bring it up just a little bit more. And I'm going to hit Shift and click a couple times on our image on the background. And then I'm going to click on a layer mask and then hit Command-I to invert that layer mask. So you can see how easy it is to cut out our subject. Just grab the magic wand tool. And that's because she's on a nice, clean backdrop. OK, now we're going to change this back from normal to lighten. And there we go. We're starting to see her there in the image. And here you can still you can move her. like you can scale her up or down or whatever you want. The idea is to get like, you want to be able to get a pretty good hint of what's going on in the image, but you don't want to show too much. Keep things a little bit more interesting. OK, now our background. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask to that. I'm just trying to stay sane through all this. <laughs> if I had like an hour to show you, this would be easy. All right, we're going to grab our background. And this whole part of it, these flowers over here, they're not too necessary for our image, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to make those selections with the lasso tool and then fill that with black on our layer mask. There we go. So we're starting to look a little bit better now. Let's just go ahead and get this little guy here and fill that with black on our layer mask now. So we can see we are actually getting to something that looks like, yeah, that looks kind of artistic and kind of good. Let's hit Command-T on this and rotate the flowers just a little bit more. There we go. But let's just say, like, you know what? I'd like to see more of her face. Well, because our blending mode for our subject here is lighten, anything that we put underneath there that's darker, it's going to show up. So all I have to do is make a couple duplicates of my flower layers underneath, and I can fill in those areas where I need them. So here we go. We're going to grab our flower layer, and I'm going to hit Command J, and basically just use my Move tool right here. There we go. Let's change our blending mode from normal down to darken. And that's just going to give me a little bit more space. Now, I don't need to use this in any particular place. I just, I'm going to use it to get a little bit more definition maybe here on her face. Why not? That looks pretty good right there. So we're just going to fill this layer mask with black. Shift Delete, and we'll go down to black. There we go. And then I'm just going to use my white paintbrush and paint it back right here visible over top of her face. So the idea is you still have this like really nice flower texture. You still have your double exposure, but it's going to give you a little bit more detail. OK, really cool. I want to do one more step. She was wearing a really cool hat originally, and I want to bring back the detail of her hat. So if I hit Command and click on my layer mask, what that's going to do is it's going to make a selection out of my layer mask. Now, if I just grab a brush tool and start painting black over there, you can see this is where the selection actually was on my layer mask, right? OK, so painting black 
That's a lot of fun. Why not? What we're going to do is I'm actually going to use this as a layer mask and we're going to put even more flowers on here because I want some flowers to like kind of fill up this area of her hat. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a duplicate of my of my flower layer again. So we're just duplicating this layer. Now I'm going to all I have to do is hold down the alt or the option key and click and drag my layer mask from the layer she's on to the flowers. Okay, so now it's like, all right, we've got these flowers. They're basically in the same layer mask. Let's just bring those down below as well. Again, we need to change this from a normal to a darken group. So that's going to, basically, we've just got to like add more and more flowers here. We don't want the white to show up, only the white from our lighting group. Okay. Now it's going to get more complex, and you're probably saying this is already incredibly complex, but you know what? <laughs> if you can follow along with this, you are a Photoshop professional. Okay, so what we've got is our flower group, and we've got a layer mask here. Now I'm going to unlink these. By default, they're linked, so if you move one, the other is going to move as well. I'm going to unlink these so I can move just the flowers, and check that out. I can move the flowers, but my layer mask is staying intact, right? And the layer mask, I remember I wanted to fill this area in the right side here with some more flowers. So I'm going to hit Command T, and we're just going to scale this up a little bit. There we go. All right. And that looks pretty good there. Let's just make sure. All right. That looks pretty good. So I just wanted to fill in that area of our hat. Now, this is well above and beyond just a standard double exposure. Normally, you just stick them together, do a blending mode, and then call it a day. But why not take it to a new, new level? OK, so that looks pretty good. Now, we can basically, I just need the rest of this layer to be black. I don't need this to be visible anywhere else. I just want this visible right here on the hat on the right side. OK, so I'm going to group that. We're going to put a layer mask on that. And I'm going to invert the layer mask so now it's black. And then we just paint white on our layer mask right here, and we get this detail back where the hat is. And a little bit on her face. There we go. Very cool. So again, just an extra cool little detail. And now we have all these really nice areas that we can actually, I can move any of these around because anything we see on our subject, again, is still just because we have this lighting group. So basically, I'm just building a dark background and then popping a light subject over top of that. OK, now, really, I, there's one more thing I want to do. This little bit of um, black right here on her eye, I really don't want that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Clone Stamp tool. We're going to go sample current and below. And because I'm still below our subject here, I can just sample anywhere. I can sample right over here and start painting in. And there we go, which I'm going to just sample right over here. And we're going to paint this in. There we go. All right, because I didn't want that black there. I thought maybe we can look a little bit better than just black. All right, almost done there. Very cool. All right, so this is actually, I, I like this a lot. Now, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and, like, we've got almost a piece of art. We're going to just make this a little bit better. So I'm going to grab my crop tool now. We're going to crop this in, choose a really nice crop so it's nice and centered here. There we go. Something like that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and click that checkbox. And now we're going to go ahead and add some color to the background to really make this into something cool. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and group all of my layers together. And we're going to just pretend that they're totally separate. What we're going to grab is a levels adjustment layer. And I actually want to make, I don't really need this to be white anymore. I was just using that kind of for the difference between the two images so I could actually blend them together. But now I don't want the background to be black to be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my red channel, green channel, and blue channel. We can actually click here on the output. And that's just going to basically, if from the blue channel pulling the output level, it's going to add more yellow. The green channel pulling down is going to add more magenta. All right. And the red channel is going to add more cyan. So we can kind of choose what we actually want here. All right. There we go. That looks pretty good. So it's just giving a little bit more color. Here on our layer mask, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'm going to choose to paint a black gradient. Let's just choose a foreground to transparent gradient. We're going to choose a black radial gradient right there. 
just to kind of like give a little bit of shine right where our subject is. All right, then we're going to do one more thing, and that's going to add a complementary color. So I'm going to go to our hue, saturation. We're going to click on this colorize button. Let's just bring our saturation up and our lightness down. There we go. And then I'm going to choose like a nice greenish color like this. We can always change this. It really doesn't matter what you start off because it's an adjustment layer. You can change it at any time. All right, I'm going to hit Command I on the layer mask now, and we're going to paint white in a foreground to transparent gradient again. Let's just zoom out there. We're going to paint white just kind of like around the edges. All right, just to give it like a little bit more like a interesting color right around the edges. There we go. That looks pretty cool. All right, let's see if we like the color. I can bring it a little bit more to the blue side. Let's bring our saturation up and our brightness down. There we go. So just adding like a little bit of a complementary color in there. So you can see there's just the image, and then adding those just makes it, I feel like it makes it a bit more interesting. All right, we're going to do one more thing, and that's going to add a white border. So I'm just going to grab a marquee tool. We're going to drag up from the top left down to the bottom right there. And we're going to hit Shift Command I and then Shift Delete and fill that with white. And that's just going to give us a white border on our image. And there you have it, guys, creating an amazing piece of art using double exposure in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching, Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was actually really complex, but if you could follow along with this, you're doing great. Basically, the ideas are super simple. Just choose images that are high contrast, so like dark on light or light on dark. Blend those together using like multiply or screen lighten or darken adjustment layers, adjustment modes, and you're gonna be good to go. You can create all kinds of really amazing effects. And don't forget about using selections and layer masks so you can add more details like we did with the hat in this one to like give that extra little detail, make it look a little bit more like a portrait. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do it by clicking on the screen right now and we release videos every single week so you guys can stay up to date and learn some amazing things in Photoshop. Leave us a comment down below if you guys like this episode and if you want to learn something new, leave us an idea down below. That's how we get our ideas for our episodes. And again, don't be sure don't be sure to share this with your friends. Actually, do be sure to share this with your friends. I said that wrong, but I'm gonna leave it, whatever. <laughs> Thanks guys, and I'll flirt you later. This fan week is basically gonna be great. Don't be sure to not share, don't for with your friends, not do that. Don't not be sure to not tell your friends to not share this if you do want to share it. Don't share this with your friends. Not. This shirt is black, not. <laughs> All right, that was dumb.